what recent studies come to mind maybe in the past couple of years that, uh, that you found some interesting results on? Yeah, it depends on how far back we go with, with studies. But collectively, um, first, fundamentally, we, we really now have the opportunity to manipulate ratios of colors for, for plants. Um, we know that blue light reduces cell division and re reduces cell enlargement. And pretty much in all plants, from, from lettuce to redwood trees to everything. So we can manipulate blue light to make plants be more compact. And this is also true in floriculture, too. You want really compact plants in floriculture. So that's a pretty fundamental effect of blue light. Green light is photobiologically less active. It doesn't trigger specific, it doesn't trigger phytochrome, doesn't trigger cryptochrome. Uh, but I guess I, you could say it's, a, it's an important filler light. Sunlight is full of green. Um, now we can get a lot of green because white white fluorescent LEDs are so efficient. Um, so green light is more valuable than most people think because it penetrates deep into canopies. Um, so most of our studies um, have pretty high levels of green light, partly to simulate sunlight and partly as a stabilizer for all the other colors. Then we get into red light which is really photosynthetically efficient. We'd like to give the plants as much red as possible. It's absorbed really efficiently by the plants. They're electrically efficient. The lights we use here in the research greenhouse at Utah State University are 80% red, 20% white, 80% red. Lots of people use 90% red, 10% white, to make the plants electrically efficient, and they are, and they supplement the sunlight in the in the greenhouse. Um, so red light is we we'd like to keep that as high as we can, and then we bring in far red, and and like I said, this is like a blowtorch. You just have to be careful because too much of it really enhances stem elongation, and that's virtually always universally bad. We, we just, we want to keep plants short. But if they're not in a stem elongation phase, then you can bring in far red light. And far red LEDs are very electrically efficient. They really convert electricity into photons very efficiently. Um, so we, in the future, I think we'd like to use as much far red light as we can get away with. Just that to be careful. And again, there's phasic lighting. If the plant is not in a stem elongation phase, you can bring in far red light and, uh, and potentially improve plant growth. I know this is a broad summary to, to this, but but it but it uh, and and lots of our studies we collaborate with other labs. We collaborate with Eric Runkel at Michigan State and his students and. Um, looking at ratios of colors now. Um, if we have higher far red, we can also add higher blue because one makes the plants taller, one makes the plant shorter. What do we do with ratios of colors? And some of these studies are not just for indoor agriculture. They're for global climate change. A whole bunch of plants on the planet are growing in shade, in forest, understory crops. We're learning a lot about how those plants respond to ratios of colors um, in the field. Like far red light, that's a big deal. If, if, to show that's photosynthetically effective, all of a sudden our models of how, how well those understory crops grow are, need to change. Because we used to say, well, they get a lot of far red light, but it doesn't help. And now we know it does help. So we have to change our models to predict ecosystem photosynthesis. So it goes beyond just indoor agriculture. This clip is brought to you by Vivo Sun. Use discount code MrGrow15 to save on any of their gardening products. Go to the full episode by clicking the outro card here or click the link in the description section below. Catch you in the next video.